they already know what you're looking at on the internet, right? Uh, they already know uh, where your phone is moving. Now they know what your heart rate is, your pulse is. Five years later, the coronavirus is gone. This data is still available to them. They start looking for new things. Whenever there is a crisis, uh, rationality uh, exits the room and you have uh, a policy that is being driven by panic in the pursuit of benefits that at the time are theoretical. They said these things uh, would work. They said they were necessary. They said they would be beneficial. We don't want to do them, but the threat is so great that this is the only way that we can really counter them. When we see emergency measures passed, uh, particularly today, uh, they tend to be sticky. Um, the emergency tends to be expanded uh, then the authorities become comfortable, they start to like it, uh, and the original emergency passes. Coronavirus is gone, it's no longer a big thing. They find new applications, new uses for this new power they gained, uh, and they went, well, maybe we don't need to give this up. Maybe we can pass a new law uh, that makes this permanent. Authority. And we've seen this happening country after country. It's not a local uh, domestic issue. And what people are, are missing, that I think people who are looking at this from a longer span are catching, is uh, the coronavirus is a serious problem, but it is a transient problem. Uh, we will eventually have the vaccine, uh, or even if we don't, we will eventually have herd immunity. Uh, in two years, uh, this problem will be gone. Uh, but the consequences of the decision that we make now uh, are permanent. What we have is a transition from government that's looking at us from the outside in mass surveillance. They used to be looking at your phone, right, and they wanted to know what you were clicking on, right? They wanted to know what you were reading, what you were buying, uh, this kind of associated information. Um, but now when we get into this health context, they want to know, are you ill? They want to know your physical state. They want to know what's happening under your skin. If we permit to uh, say, look, we can track every cell phone of every person everywhere all the time. We can make inferences on the basis of this data set and then we can take executive actions uh, as a result of this information. What keeps them from going, well, we're worried about health, we're worried about public health, we're worried about protecting people. The primary symptom of the coronavirus is a fever, right? This develops before the cough and persists uh, throughout the course of the virus that your immune system fighting off. Uh, we're going to send an order to every fitness tracker um, that can get something like pulse or heart rate. Uh, and we're going to start demanding access to this kind of activity. Um, and now we're going to go, well, these people have elevated pulses. Uh, and now, you know, five years later, the coronavirus is gone. This data is still available to them. They start looking for new things. They already know what you're looking at on the Internet, right? Uh, they already know uh, where your phone is moving. Now they know what your heart rate is, your pulse is. What happens when they start to intermix these and apply artificial intelligence to it? And Harari asks, uh, if you have this bracelet that tracks your temperature and your pulse, uh, and they know you're watching 
the video, or uh, you're just watching a speech from a uh, and they see you get angry, right? Uh, because emotions really are biological processes. These are our products that have uh, measurable states associated with them by sensors. And they go, well, this person doesn't like what's being said. Uh, and it's one thing if an advertiser does this, it's still chilling, it's still dangerous or bank does it, or it happens in a job interview. But what happens when you have built, over the course of a generation, the architecture of... We are moving closer and closer to that world every day, and we let panic motivate our decisions. Uh, rather than rational reflection regarding inevitable consequences uh, about this narrowing of our rights. We're not being asked for security or privacy. Um, in a free and open society, the thing is we're supposed to say uh, we need both. Uh, and this is derived from the protection of rights. If we begin destroying rights, sacrificing rights in order to improve things, we're actually making things worse.